Dilip here. Welcome back to yet another CM Weekly Case of the Week series. And we are into episode number 16 already. And this week, as a tradition, we are going to discuss an interesting ECG because last week we did an interesting neurology case. I know last week's case is kind of very appealing and quite challenging. And this week's ECG is also going to be the same. It's going to be very challenging. And superficially, if you look at the ECG, you might feel it's very simple and straightforward. But uh, if you analyze the ECG deeper, you will understand the intricacies of each and everything that we're going to discuss. And with this brief introduction, I welcome you to CM Weekly episode number 16. And that is ECG of the week. Here's the case, 71-year-old male presenting with uh, atrial fibrillation and is a known case of coronary artery disease as well. And he had a bypass surgery in the past for the same. And he is now admitted for acutely compensated heart failure. This is shown. And I'm sure that many of you guys will be well versed with the systematic approach. You know that the first thing that I need to really discuss is whether the patient is in sinus rhythm or not. First of all, you can see that the rhythm is irregular. There is absolutely no doubt about that. And the ventricular response is approximately around 80, if I'm not wrong. Just see the number of ventricular responses 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 13 times 6 is around 78. So I can say the ventricular response is approximately around 80 per minute. And look at the atrial responses. I need to know whether the rhythm is sinus or non-sinus. First of all, I'm able to see the P waves or not. That's the first question. Yes, I'm able to see P waves at multiple places. You can see P waves. You can see P waves. The best lead to look at the P waves are going to be the leads 2 and V1. In lead 2, I'm not able to see much of discernible P waves. But in lead V1, yes. If you're not able to see good P waves in lead 2, but you're able to see some P waves in lead 1, that itself is suggesting that the P wave vector is different. It's not sinus. And similarly, in lead V1, you have to see biphasic P waves. It can have a prominent positive reflection or negative reflection, depending on the fact whether it's a right atrial or left atrial enlargement, respectively. But the P wave should have a biphasic pattern in lead V1, and you have to see the same P waves in lead 2 as well. I'm not able to see much of P waves in lead 2. I'm able to see P waves in V1 without any biphasic pattern, clearly suggesting that this must be a non sinus P wave. So I'm going to conclude that this patient is having an ectopic atrial tachycardia or I can say a focal atrial tachycardia. 